Hi everyone and welcome to our Facebook group this week, week where we're going to be talking about side effects to methylfolate or ind indeed any methyls. So why might someone have a reaction to methyls? Well number one, they might be a type that just doesn't use their methyls particularly well. They're creating enough but their utilization is not so good and these can be people with a Compta mutation they can also have low B12. So if you've got low B12, then that's going to be an issue because you're not going to be able to use your methyls effectively. There might also be chronic inflammation. So remember we said last week that imagine you're standing in a stream and you're neck deep. And if I let out the floodgates up, up the stream, you're going to be swamped with water. Well, that's the same thing. If you are... Um, stimulating your detoxification process but you've got no ability to detoxify you're releasing heavy metals or you're releasing things that need to be got rid of but you actually can't do it so it makes you feel worse so this can very much be the issue if you have poor gut health you've got liver issues kidney lymphatic or skin issues so any of those can be um, a reason why you um, might have a reaction to methyls. Also, you might just be taking too much. But usually the people that we see with the very bad reactions and, and particularly with the anxiety and the mood is that their body is just, there's too many chronic things going on and inflammation is obviously one of them. And, and the gut, if your body, if your gut is actually creating inflammatory markers and lipopolysaccharides, then that's going to put pressure on the methylation cycle as well. If you have sulfur issues, so you have problems with onion, garlic, eggs, broccoli, any of the sulfur-based foods, then your body may actually have a problem with sulfur. And so again, if you stimulate that methionine cycle, which stimulates the CBS pathway, you're going to be creating a heck of a lot more sulfur that you actually can't get rid of, particularly if you're taking a lot of B6 as well. So there's a lot of reasons and we've got to remember that there are many methyl donors. So for example, we know methylfolate is, we know methylcobalamin, your methyl B12 is, but also think about things like turmeric and caffeine and MSM and melatonin and CoQ10, carnitine, trimethylglycine, SAMe, even someone who drinks buckets of, of green juices can be creating too many methyls in their system and so they just can't and if they if their utilization isn't good then that may be an issue and I see that a lot with first-time patients who think they're doing the right thing and normally one would say yes but because they already have a problem with methyls they're actually creating an added burden that the body can't cope with and they don't understand why they're not getting better even though they've really tried to improve their diet. Um, now, some of the signs and symptoms that we have to look out for. And it's really good when you start taking methyls to actually do a diary. Just get into bed every night, rate your anxiety out of 10 and rate your mood out of 10. So obviously a 10 out of 10 anxiety is very high and we don't want that. But a 10 out of 10 in mood is good. So if you see over the period of a week or two weeks that you suddenly are noticing that your mood is going south or your anxiety is going up, then you need to be thinking, is it the methyl that I'm taking that is causing this issue? Because mo most of the time it is. And it's very hard for you to actually be in the middle of that and, and understand that that's what's going on. So that's why the diary is really good. Now, signs of too many methyls may be headaches, migraine, irritability, joint pain. Some people get really exhausted. Um, rashes. So funny methyl rash often looks like a, a tiger's stripe. And it's almost as if you've got three fingers and you've scratched your skin with it. And I've seen that quite a few times. And it can be on the wrists, it can be on the legs, and it can be on the torso. Also, eczema type uh, scabs can appear. That's pro usually when people are taking too many. Uh, a sharp, as we said, 
a, either a sharp, a sudden or a very gr um, gradual decrease in your mood is a big deal and we don't want that at all and you shouldn't put up with it, not even for one day. Anxiety going through the roof, again, we don't want that. Uh, nausea, insomnia, muscle aches and pains, um, an over revved feeling and some people who have actually had problems with methyls or not enough methyls, when they start taking them, it's almost like they're on speed and they're going 100 miles an hour, but they're over revving their body and then they feel exhausted at the end of the day. So that's not a good environment because it's overworking your adrenals. Some people might have vomiting or sweating or palpitations or I've even had one patient explain it as a locked jaw. They could barely talk. So these are all things that you need and the handout for this week, please look at that because it lists all of these and it actually tells you how to take the niacin. So the reason niacin works is because you use methyls up to basically metabolize the niacin. So the more, more niacin you take, the more you're chewing through those methyls. So the good thing to do is to start with a 50 milligram niacin and take one every hour until you feel the symptoms. If you are feeling depressed or suicidal, then you need to be taking either two, three, or four in your first couple of doses. You take them, and then most people, after about three or four hours, will actually start to feel a lot better. Some people, it might take a couple of days. And once you are back to your normal, then you can go back to the dose that, that before you had that reaction. So that's usually the best thing to do. However, if you became suicidal, do not try methyls again and make sure you speak to your practitioner and work out why you had that reaction. But if it was just a few headaches or maybe you had a bit of nausea or some muscle aches and pains, which by the way is the headaches and muscle aches and pains are really, really common. And 90% of people, when they first try methyls, will actually get those symptoms, but they should go within four to five days. So make sure you go back to the dose and stay on it longer. So if you were increasing, like we said last week, if you were increasing by a quarter of a methyl every five or six days, then perhaps you go back and you only, you stay on that quarter for two or three weeks. There's no rule about what is right or what is wrong. It's, it's individual and it all depends on you. So if you've taken the niacin and you then come back and you go slower, then that's great. And make sure there's a practitioner keeping an eye on you while you're doing this. And I usually make sure that I speak to my patients every five days at the max when I'm introducing methylfolate. So I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of questions around that this week. But have a look at the handout and I really look forward to getting stuck into this because it's a really important part of understanding what methyls are or are not doing to the system and you. So if you've taken the niacin and you then come back and you go slower, then that's great and make sure there's a practitioner keeping an eye on you while you're doing this. And I usually make sure that I speak to my patients every five days at the max when I'm introducing methylfolate. So I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of questions around that this week, but have a look at the handout and I really look forward to getting stuck into this because it's a really important part of understanding what methyls are or are not doing to the system. So I look forward to seeing you and bye for now.